Made for me, chapter 11. As Danielle removed the rubber band from her hair, she caught Andre watching as the massive dark auburn cascaded over her shoulders. Moments later, the vibrations of the engine were running up and down her inner thighs and her hands were around his hard waist. He sped through the town, taking a left up the cobblestone road that led to her flat. When he stopped the bike, she handed him his helmet. See you in 50. Inside, she quickly showered, combed through her hair, applied her going out makeup, and found clothes that hadn't seen the light of day since just before Lonnie and Stephen left for Zurich. She exhaled a huge sigh of relief, the leather shorts fit. She chose her low-cut ankle-high black boots because they showed off her cut calves and had a heel stable enough to take the pounding and twisting of dancing. She slipped on a black undershirt that rose to her collarbone and extended to her shoulders. With a silver net over it, the effect was sexy but also relatively modest. She firmly believed men were more intrigued when you showed less, not more. A week, and I'm already going out on a date? It was crazy, but Andre doesn't want serious and it's not what I want either. Danielle was in the kitchen when the buzz of the security system rang. She leaned over and pressed the call button. I'll be right down, she said. He greeted her with a kiss to both cheeks. He smelled delicious. She saw where his eyes were focused and she touched her hair a bit self-consciously. Several deep brown curls fell across her chest and with the rest of her hair pulled back and placed in a high ponytail. I've never been inside these apartments, Andre said, walking beside her on the path leading to the car. Do you like your view? It's good, I can see the water. He stopped on the passenger side of a red 1967 Ford Mustang convertible. What's this? Andre put his key in the lock. I didn't want to take the chance you'd be wearing a skirt. And I was sure you'd be picking me up on a bike. They laughed together. Andre eased the car down the cobblestone and as he hit the main road, the rumble of the engine reverberated throughout the car, the antithesis of quiet modern rides. When you drive this muscle car, do your friends think you've gone rogue? Andre pressed his lips together, but she couldn't tell if it was out of irritation or confusion. Have you ever heard that term? Yeah, from a thug in a movie, he responded. Danielle liked the deep, hearty sound of his laughter. I like technology and speed on freeways, but for a night out like this, an American car was fitting. Andre slowed, allowing a metro to pass in front, then turned left down a side street, pointing out a delicatessen and a butcher she should try. You looked out on your building, you know, Andre said, changing the subject. It can get hot in the summer and the winds will come up off the lake. That's what Catherine, the owner, said. Danielle envisioned warm breezes and evening sunsets, sitting on the terrace, her legs stretched out. It wasn't big enough to have a chaise lounge, but she could buy a small table to go with the chairs already in place. Andre glanced sideways. Your HR person must have a really good connection because I've been looking for a while and I never even saw that listed. That or you have some very special skills they want to protect. Yeah, I have skills, she answered. But I must clarify, they are more in line with shuffling, a lot of paper and trading, nothing exotic. You, on the other hand, she continued, must be doing a lot of rope pulling on those boats. Check these out. She hooked the end of her index finger underneath the seam of his short sleeve t-shirt. The white rib top hugged his bicep. She caught a look at his legs when he shut the door and his slacks were snug around his thighs. I can definitely see you lifting weights with precision, the way everything else in this country is done. Andre gave another modest smile. We can be viewed as being a little bit uptight, but that's actually wrong. Swiss are a really a rather open, accommodating society, as long as you follow the rules that govern everything, including the color of the blinds and buildings. Daniel cracked up at his dry delivery. She thought of Lonnie and how she was smitten by Stephen's manner. Danielle was beginning to better understand it. His face was serious, but his lips gave away the humor underneath. She was still smiling as Andre turned a corner and she saw the line of people stretch the entirety of the block. Is this for the club? Andre nodded, completely unconcerned. When the car stopped, Danielle took a full breath of excitement. She hadn't been out for an evening of fun with a man her age in a long time. The valley opened the door while Andre walked around the car and took her hand. He gave a brief head nod to the fierce looking oversized bouncers who retracted a black cord. They bypassed the line, walking up a dark stairway to a thumping beat that was heard before it was seen. Once inside, she glanced up at the large crystal chandeliers invisibly suspended from a black roof illuminated with star cutouts. 
dotting the corners were booths, practically dark, the outlines of silhouettes confirming they were full of bodies. Like it so far? Andre asked. She turned just enough to make eye contact and smiled, nodding vigorously. Her unrestrained response made him grin and he squeezed her hand. She knew there were dozens, if not hundreds, of attractive men in this new town of hers, but damn, when she looked at him, thoughts of any others evaporated. Do you see Lonnie or Stephen? He asked. Danielle joined him in the search, eventually pointing upward. Right there. Lonnie was in a cage, dressed in a mid-thigh skirt over black fishnet nylons and a crop top holding onto the bars. Lonnie's evident pleasure gave Danielle another endorphin boost. In some small way, she was helping her friend find relief from the stresses of a failing restaurant and the challenges of having a family. Stephen stood on the floor nearby, engaged in an animated conversation with two men. What can I get you to drink? She turned too quickly, her cheek touching his, and she smiled in apology, although she wasn't sorry at all. The touch had been exhilarating. I don't drink. He tilted his head as if he hadn't heard her correctly. At all? Water, juice, or soda, but only Sprite. The noise made it difficult to talk, and he leaned into her again, her hand touching his forearm as he did so. It's a long story, but it relates to not smoking either. I'll tell you about it later. She encouraged him to drink, but he declined, instead stepping up to the bar and ordering what she did. Andre handed her a cranberry and soda, simultaneously turning his back to the bar. She felt the heat of his arm and the protective stance he'd taken. Here's to you being in Zurich. And going out to a club. She responded, raising her glass to his. Technically, he paused ever so slightly. It's considered a date. She raised an eyebrow quizzically. Unless it's an epic failure in which it won't count and we'll call a do-over. They smiled in unison, the glasses clinking. She looked over her glass at his eyes. A piece of ice slid into her mouth and she sucked on it, her body swaying to the slower groove. The down beats every third, the two up beats perfect for her shoulders and hips. It wasn't meant to be sensual, but it was. Without asking, Andre lifted the glass from her hands and set it on the counter. He took her hand and led her towards the center of the dance floor. Her hands went up, chest high, moving her upper body in time with the music. Soon the floor was so crowded they couldn't move without touching. At first, both of them gave apologetic looks and stepped back, only to be pushed into each other again. Eventually, Andre smiled, lifted up his arms on either side of her. Thank you, she mouthed, not bothering to say the words out loud. They wouldn't be heard anyway. The music reverberated with continual waves of light, the reds, blues, and greens touching Andre's face and chest, and she didn't hold back from expressing her delight at being there, with him, through the way she moved her body. Danielle glanced up at Lonnie, seeing that she was still in her cage, and Stephen animatedly talking with his friends. Andre tried to get their attention several times, but failed. I think they needed the release, Danielle half yelled in his ear. He nodded, his head bent slightly towards her. Andre's lips remained flat, but his eyes were alive and focused on her, excluding all else. She rotated her body so her back was to him. Moments later, she felt his chest pressed against her, their hands bouncing in time with their heads, sporadically connecting. The slight touches sent thrilling spikes of excitement through her. A bead of sweat made its way down her temple and she felt the moisture between her breasts and down her lower back. The song changed to a melodic trance, the tone sultry. I can't believe I'm doing this. Her rational self knew that she had been, had she been at home, she never ever would have gone dancing with a man on the first date. It was too intimate, like making love vertically. But it's not the real world, she thought, her eyes fluttering wide open. Somewhere between considering temporary pleasure and permanent celibacy, she felt Andre's arms encircle her waist. His warm cheek caressed hers, the hair tickling her face. Then it happened. The edge of his lips touched hers. She involuntarily opened her mouth to take a breath and his fingers squeezed hers, slowing their movement to a sway out of time with the music. Carefully, she rotated her face, their lips remaining connected from one corner to the center. Her lower back tingled as his fingers made random figures against her. She opened her mouth to inhale and Andre's tongue found its way inside. She curled her fingers on his chest, unconsciously responding to his touch, pressing herself against him, eclipsing the distance between her legs and his. Caught up in the sensation, they continued until the upbeat started again. 
Andre pulled back a millimeter at a time. When his ear reached her lips, she touched his soft skin. Do you think Lonnie and Stephen have noticed we are here yet? He responded by grazing her cheek, his hair once again tickling her. Stephen has moved only to get Lonnie another drink, he murmured. Do you really want to go see them? Not really. They stayed on the dance floor long enough for him to trace the lines of her hips and waist with the tip of his thumb, the motion sexual yet not intrusive. She shivered and he smiled, his eyes never leaving hers. At the start of the third song, she suggested they go see their friends. We can't. They've left. Daniel felt a fleeting crush of guilt. I waved to them, Andre continued. They look pretty satisfied. Really? Her eyes were wide. Stephen told me they wanted you to be happy. I guess they could see you were. On the way home, she and Andre discussed what she thought of the people, the music, and the club, and he gave a broad smile at her enthusiastic responses. And that's only one club, he said, the notion of exploring others clear. Andre asked if she was still up for taking a motorcycle tour. Danielle barely heard the question as a thought overtook her, making her laugh. What's funny? He asked the question seriously, and she caught herself. I was just thinking about the differences between this culture and my own. I'm up for being enlightened. If we were in the U.S. and had had the evening we just had, an American man would have invited himself up to my apartment. A pause followed that comment. Would you like that? The question, so frank and without pretense, swept away any sarcastic or evasive response. Yes. In the dark, Danielle watched a very slight curve appear on his lips, the only indication Andre was pleased. I won't stay long, he told her, the comic easing her mind while slightly disappointing her. The opposing thoughts made her laugh again. You find me that funny? I find this whole culture funny, or confusing may be a better word. Andre pulled into the slot behind her garage, turned the engine off, and leaned into her. I find nothing confusing about how much I want you. A burst of desire swept through her body, his directness more intoxicating than anything he'd done on the dance floor. With that thought in her head, she led him into the elevator and pressed the button, inserting the key. Danielle felt the touch of his fingertips on her lower back, the pressure a link of energy between them. One week, one date, and now this? They started with gentle affection in the foyer, progressing to rough passion in the hallway and ending with an intense, climatic session in the bedroom. After he left, she stayed awake for some time, her left elbow under her pillow, contemplating the evening. He had been physically magnificent, and his desire to stimulate her greatly appreciated. What it lacked was an emotional tie, an element of an actual relationship that couldn't be fabricated or forced. That's a good thing, she knew, closing her eyes, comfortable with the casual intimacy. No ties, no commitment, and no expectation. Exactly what she had anticipated and what she'd gotten.